guide uh, the Guru Yoga practice a little bit. So sit in a five point posture. Those of you know how to sit in five point posture, sit in five point posture and try to pay attention to each point. Those of you who don't know, and just whatever comfortable position you find, you sit in that comfortable position. It's allowed to rest your body, rest the energies in your body, allow to rest your mind. As your body is still, as many people who are participating during this meditation, their whole bodies are still, just feel that individual and collective sense of stillness that we feel the stillness of each other. You feel the stillness of all the surround surrounding the world. Feel that stillness and just simply be aware and connect with that. It's like there's a huge stillness supporting you to find your own inner stillness. Just be aware of your breath, not hold. Just continue taking deep breath. If there's any sense of tension, breathe it out. Now listen and hear the silence around you, within you, and also be aware of that silence, a collective sense of silence, all around the world. Everybody who is participating in this meditation, feel, connect with that collective silence.
you continuously be in that stillness and silence. Now I just feel that sense of space that we all are in one big space, a collective space. Whole universe, it's in that single space. All existence in, is in that single space. All of us, it's in that single space. We are breathing in that single space. There's so much space and openness around and within us. Just draw a little attention to that. Just be aware of that. You'll feel it and connect with that. Feel that collective space, collective openness. <coughs> Your openness is affecting others. Others' <coughs> openness is affecting you. Collective openness is affecting everybody else. In that stillness, silence, and the spaciousness, the stillness of your body, silence of your speech, the spaciousness of your mind and heart, we imagine and feel the presence of Taparita, the image behind me, one of the most important lineage masters in Shang Yun Yinju. Just imagine that luminous, crystal clear, surrounded with a rainbow light, sky in front of us, in front, in front of you, facing you, who represents all the masters of the past, present, future, from everybody you have learned, you're learning, you will learn. <coughs> Just feel a sense of openness devotion, <coughs> connection.
as we sing Ram, Yang and Mang, imagine wisdom fire, wisdom air, wisdom water comes from the heart of the Tapirita toward us and purify all our karmas as close to the end of the year. Just imagine whatever you want, you need to be purified. This is the moment. Just feel, give a time, and reflect on those things what you need to be purified. Allow this, and also feel the collective sense of power that all, all the people doing practice around the world is we supporting each other. Allow it to purify them in our body, in the field of energy in our every cells in our body, and in our mind. So coming, when we sing the first syllable, coming from Tabriz's heart, like a fire, wisdom fire. Second syllable, coming wisdom air, like if you're sitting on the top of the mountain and wind is, wind is blowing. Wisdom water, like if you're taking a shower. But it's purifying all what you need to be clear at the end of the year. Continuously feel the flowing of wisdom, fire, air, water through you, clearing, burning, blowing up, washing away. Those you are not very familiar with the practice and you, you can just feel as if everybody is doing collectively, you can just simply rest there and allow it to happen as we are guiding it. As we sing three sacred syllables, Aum Hum, imagine and feel Syllable so, well, A from the forehead, white light comes of Tabriza to your forehead. Receive all the empowerment of the body through the speech, through the throat. Red light comes and uh, through your throat. Receive all the empowerment of speech from the heart of Tabriza. Blue light comes to your heart. Receive all the empowerment of the mind. So basically, you're receiving all the empowerment and the healings to your body, to your speech, to your mind. 
continuously feel these blessings, empowerment is coming toward you. Also feel that collectively we are all receiving the same, feeling the same, feeling that oneness. Okay. So, maybe, you know, if everything is not purified, so we have to do the second purification. <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> first I want to just say a few words of like a Dzogchen teaching. Um, so, I think uh, uh, as a teaching, as a Dzogchen teaching, it is clearly uh, the most uh, direct and the most profound teaching. Um, and also, in a way, uh, it's most simple. You know. uh, simple does not necessarily mean everybody will get it. There are a lot of simple things people don't get it, right? because we are interested in more complicated things. So we are busy more looking at the complicated things, the so simple, simple ones we don't get. But it is clearly very simple and direct. And particularly, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, as part of the end of the year, so um, that every end of the year, we always, I think most of people are interested in something like looking at reflecting at the year, what is that we wanted to clear? What is that something we wanted to start new? So um, that if you look at that point of view, uh, if you look at like, a, let's say, uh, every manifestations of our thoughts, basically uh, bad mood to unproductive thoughts, negative thoughts, emotions, uh, chartering, chartering minds, obsessive thoughts to uh, addictions, f uh, anywhere from mental addictions, like just kind of worrying for no, no reason, just so used to worrying, and to addictions to eating bad or doing bad things 
or doing something. So basically actions, addictions of actions of the body, addictions of actions of the speech that you want, you're trying to want to be nice to somebody but you always end up saying something not, not that nice. Uh, you want to be nice to yourself but you always end up being not being nice to yourself. So addictions of your mind, speech and your body. So anywhere from the mood to actions or behavior. So if you look all of it, basically all of it simply is just one category. It's just a distorted mind's manifestation. Outcome is simply, it is like an outcome of disconnectedness. That, that's it. So basically, uh, I mean in that there might be so many categories we can talk about. Basically I think it covers from the bad, wrong view, bad mood to bad actions everything. So if you, look in the, if you look in this year, particularly if you look at your own life in this year, you can look, okay, what is that personally, what are my thoughts, feelings, emotions, addictions that I wanted to overcome? And how, as a very simple practice of Dzogchen, how it can help you to overcome? It's a simple, simple, I think it's a simple uh, point. So, so now, as far as the Dzogchen practice is concerned, you know, the, the most simple message is that if you are able to be in yourself, be yourself, be in the present moment, be with that stillness, silence, spacious mind. If you just, your own inner awareness is simply being aware of that, these qualities your attention is toward that, then it, that, that, that present, that awareness is so strong, it cuts everything. It cuts the wrong view, it cuts the bad mood, it cuts the, the uh, obsessive thoughts, it cuts the negative thoughts, it cuts those uh, unwanted emotions, it cuts those behavior, addictions, or even the sense of this energy of like uh, craving to do something or eat something, because it's all are basically a, a, a manifestation of some sense of dissatisfaction, a feeling of not complete. If, if it's, everything is like that, if you don't feel complete in something, then you seek for something else to complete. If you do feel complete in something, you don't want it to be replaced by anything which is similar to that because you are complete. So if you are feeling complete in yourself, you don't want any substitution to be try, trying to find yourself by doing something which is not necessary to do. So, so basically, that a single approach, in the Tibetan tradition, we sometimes we say Rigpa Changde. Rigpa Changde means only following the clear mind, a singly, a single approach of following the, the, the clear mind. So that, I think that's kind of very simple. So basically, it's like this. There is, there is you in which there is this, this what I refer as the three pills. There's, there's inner stillness, inner silence, spaciousness. And your awareness is drawing toward attention toward that and recognizing yourself, self-recognition, self-realization, present moment, being present, being aware in that moment. That single awareness is able to cut everything else about the list that I just gave. It's able to cut. If you, if you tell me that, oh, I did try, but this is not cutting, then that means Clearly, it's not you did what you said you're doing because you are not doing because you think you are being in that place. Instead, this, there is a smart ego who is claiming to being in that state, but it's really drawing more attention to all the things what you're not supposed to draw attention. You're engaging still and saying, I am doing the right practice. The one who is saying, I am doing the right practice, it's doing the wrong practice. Because the I is still strongly present there, 
which is responsible for those problems. The absence of that I, nothing, if there is no I, there's nothing I can do. And if there's nothing I can do, no problem can exist. So basically, so that is simply, this is like a single approach. So if you are able to turn your direction fully to your being, through being, or be, uh, through the stillness, silence, species, then it cuts everything. So that's the number one approach. So I want, this is not instruction that we're going to do a little short practice afterward. So this is not instruction only for the practice, but this is instruction for your life. So you, any time when these things are troubling you, that's what you're trying to do. So if you are able to do it, it will clearly cut. It's a matter of time, it will clearly cut those things because nothing is feeding. If you look, any thought, why one single thought is successful to stay rest of the day? Why one single emotion is able to, uh, you know, stay whole night? Why one single addiction is able to destroy your life? Because there is a support. These addictions are supported by the weakness. These thoughts are supported by another thought. It's like a washing hand, blooded hand with blood. You clear the first blood, then second blood is there with you. So you can you are you don't have a clear water to wash your bloody hand. What you need not a blood to wash your bloody hand. What you need is the clear water to wash your bloody hand. So it's the same way all these addictions and things, you, what do you need? Clear mind to wash it, not another unclear mind to wash those mind. That doesn't work. I probably by now, we all know it doesn't work, right? And if you still think, oh, I, it did not work until now, maybe it might work in the future. I, I, I'm going to tell you, just forget about it. You know. <laughs> Just, just forget about it. It's not going to work. All the masters in the past, everybody said, it doesn't work. You know. So maybe we, we don't have to listen to them. You know, we can try to experience ourselves. So by now, we, we have enough experience, it doesn't work. We, it, that pattern of mind needed to be cut. But how to cut? That's the whole point. How to cut is to draw attention to that inner being inner stillness, inner silence, inner spaciousness. So, so, so it's very clear that every thought is able to stay longer because it's supported by thought. Every affliction is able to stay longer because this e smart ego is supporting. S smart egos, that thought stops when you draw attention to that silence, that stillness. So that is what everybody should try to do. Let's say, as a result of, you know, if everybody is not the same, so those you are doing uh, practices not that often, you kind of have not strong experiences with that, then the only, my suggestion is first trying to do that, you know. Uh, new practitioner does not mean uh, not good enough, or the old practitioner does not mean uh, you do a better job, because it's not a wine, right? <laughs> Right, so it's basically, uh, you, if you are new, you might have a more luck. That's possibilities there. If you're old, you might have more old pattern that you think you are practicing right, which is probably you have been doing wrong way and you think it's the right way. That could be a problem. So, so new and old, forget about it. So, the, I mean, that's the beauty about the Dzogchen. It's not something, if it's an intellectual accumulation, then, you know, at the time you're learning, you're thinking a lot, you're thinking a lot, you're thinking a lot, you're reading a lot, you're reading a lot, and those reading, thinking, collect, collection of information makes, makes you smarter to answer a lot of things. But this is, this is not the thing. It's not the same here. The answer is not a lot of complication, intellectual theories. The answer is simply just being conscious of who you are. 
and simply trying to be conscious of who you are does not require so much thinking. So instead, it's the opposite. People who think a lot or addicted to think a lot or who believe thinking is the only way to resolve the problem, clearly a less chance to connect with the practice. People are more like a sensitive, more like an artist, more like a, in being more like in the moment, more grounded, are more likely to have connection, connection to the, these practices. So, so, so don't worry about like being new and old. So I, if you're anybody here thinking, oh, I, I'm new in these practices, you, you, so it does not matter, okay? Now, let's say in case of this, the attention, you're trying to pay attention to yourself through that stillness, silence, spaciousness, but these, some of these addiction thoughts are still not going, like these pains are still not going, these con con confusions are still not going. Then if it's really not going, that means you're not capable of drawing attention inward or drawing attention, uh, c connecting with that inner stillness and silence. Then what you wanted to do is you do want to pay a little attention. For example, your inner pain, for example, whatever the pain and confusion that you're uh, feeling in your life, to have a little more compassion to that. Because somehow, truly able to draw full attention toward yourself, you're not capable because you are drawing attention toward that pain. The ego, the fearful ego, the lost ego, the confused ego, distorted ego, it's trying to change its focus toward its clear aspect of self, but it's not capable of doing that. It's the pattern of looking back to the problem. It's like if you roll a paper for, for 100 years, and then if you, uh, you know, if you open it, and when you leave the hand, it goes back. Why it goes back? Because that's how it, it's used to it. So if you're drawing, trying to draw attention to that more inner clearness, it's not staying, it's going immediately back. So it is going back. You don't have the strength to do that. So then if you're doing that, then you acknowledge it. So you, can, you work with that rather than being against, rather than thinking, oh, I'm such a terrible practice, you know, I'm trying to do, draw my mind to the clear place, but he's always doing the wrong place. Don't think that way. So that, you see, the mind was judging that. <laughs> Another problem there. Another problem. There's the third problem. So you, you thought, oh, you have only one. You find out you have two. <laughs> uh, by the time you find out two, now you have realized you have three problems, you see. So you don't want you to do that. So rather you acknowledge that mind saying, okay, since it's drawing attention to that pain and confusion, so let's try to bring the awareness into that. So you, it's like, a, I, as I always give example, that, you know, draw attention to that conflict or pain of yours in a more compassionate way, in a more open way. So there's a two quality, more open way and more compassionate way. Like, uh, 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 like how you would uh, treat your best friend or your uh, favorite person in your family who, who is in pain. You will be, first of all, you will be available, present. You won't judge the person. You will not criticize the person. You will support the person. You will hold the person's hand, you will give a hug, you will listen, you will feel, you will connect, you will jump up and do anything in the moment, whatever is necessary, rather than trying to follow your own plan, you will follow the, the other person's plan. Same way. So you draw a little bit of attention to your own, whatever that unresolved a pain or confusion is, just simply draw attention to that. Open and carrying attention to that feeling, to that thought, to that emotion, to that addiction, to that physical pain, to that, uh, uh, I say, a confusing situation 
just simply clear and compassionate attention toward that. That's your meditation. So your meditation turning inward and just being in the nature of mind, it seems not possible, for not, at least not now. So because every, your attention is always going away toward those pain. Now, you, you, so you, instead of being against it, you say, okay, I'm going to do it. Do it in this way. If you do it this way, then you're doing the right way. If you're not doing it this way, you're doing the wrong way. What are you doing the wrong way? What are you doing the wrong way? You, you would say, why I'm confused? You can be confused about your confusion. You can feel painful about feeling pain. So it, it, there's one you already have, another one you're adding on it. Every single emotions, you can feel that. I'm angry about getting angry. I'm sad about being sad. I'm upset about being upset. I'm confused about being confused. The first confusion is okay. Second confusion is you're adding it. Second sadness is unnecessary. The first, second anger is unnecessary. Second confusion is unnecessary. Second thought is unnecessary. All the second one is unnecessary. So instead of adding second, you bring that space to that feeling, thought, and emotion. Yeah, it's very simple. Very simple. If you think about uh, taking care of yourself, loving yourself, I think that's what you wanted to do. That's how you do. How it, the way you treat your good friends, you treat yourself the same way. So if you know how to treat very well uh, your best friends, your f family members, you treat the same way yourself that way. So saying that, you know, one thing I would like to talk a little bit about is something that, you know, as a new year beginning, you know, we're talking about bad mood, you know, to a bad, a wrong view, bad mood, thoughts, emotions, addictions. And maybe I wanted to, from the view of Dzogchen, which we're talking here a little bit now, maybe end up talking a little bit about the addictions of food. So addictions of food, maybe one thing I want to talk a little bit about is I, I felt like maybe, you know, just to talk a little bit about being vegetarian. So, you know, of course, from the point of view of the teaching of uh, Buddha, and, you know, like we say, you know, like killing or uh, killing somebody or asking somebody to kill somebody, being part of the killing, uh, supporting the k uh, killing. And so everything has some kind of a negative karma. So if you, of course, if you're eating meat, then, you know, there is, there is a, a negative karma related to it uh, from the point of view of the teaching. Because if, if nobody is buying meat, then uh, nobody will sell meat. If nobody is selling meat, then nobody will kill anybody. So the, the eater, the buyer, the seller, the killer, uh, all have uh, different portions of that karma. Not probably the same amount, but definitely everybody is part of it. So there is a clearly, you know, I mean, sometimes you see these images, kind of very, very strong images in, in the Facebook pages that, you know, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm no, you, you know, everybody know probably I'm talking about, you know, like that the reverse, the situation of the people are hanging there and a butcher and the, the animals are walking to shopping the meat. Just imagine, you know, imagine yourself hanging in the butcher, you know. And, uh, you know, the cow and the pigs and the chicken, they are coming, looking, oh, I want to shop this guy. I want to eat a piece of that meat. Just imagine, in principle, What's the difference? It's just you reverse the situation. I mean, if you feel anything in, in, in relation to that, if you feel anything or is that shifting that, then kind of you know what it feels like. And that's how it feels, probably that's how it is feeling. So clearly, you know, from the teaching point of view, it's, a, it's, a, it's a recommended. 
And also, you know, like uh, that uh, from the point of view of uh, uh, health, also, I think uh, I'm just basically talking about the sense of addiction. So I'm just trying to take the addiction a little bit too far, a little far away, far in terms of trying to relate that to becoming a vegetarian here. Is that, you know, from the health point of view, it's also that, you know, people, uh, time where people really, really believe uh, that meat and uh, dairy product, uh, products are very important for, uh, for pro protein. But nowadays, you know, uh, people, uh, many people believe that there's enough proteins you get from many other sources. You don't have to eat meat. So it's not that that is not an excuse, and of course, then some people thinking, oh, I really I'm O blood type, and I'm my genes are different, different thing. I definitely need meat. Maybe maybe it's possible. I'm not sure about that, you know. But anyway, that the, my point is that that you know, if you really, 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 really feel need, maybe then you can minimize it. But the amount of people eat today, cons consumption of meat, it's, it's just too much. So I mean, I've been there personally. I've been there, so I know exactly. You know, it's just, a, it's just a addiction. So I strongly recommend to uh, lessen or become vegetarian. And in fact, here at Southern Ridge, we are also uh, thinking that maybe we will turn this place into a vegetarian zone. So, so, and of course, the people, those you will. Uh, come here in the retreat in a certain ridge. I'm, I'm sure those of you feel like I go there because I have meat there to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the, but that's not good, you know. Like if, if you're coming for one year, one year here, and you're missing meat, and you really need, then I can understand you're coming five days here, not eat, not eating meat. Just look forward to come for eat, come retreat here, and and of course we have to improve our vegetarian food, right? That, that, that need to be improved. I mean, if, you're, if you're doing vegetarian, they are, the meat eaters, they don't know, they, th they think, what, what is there to eat if you don't eat meat, right? Uh -huh. But that's not true. There's an incredible amount of what you can eat and what you can make. So, and the health-wise also, you know, like there, there are a lot of researchers now. There's, they say the dairy product actually, you know, from 20% uh, eat, eating more, 20%, the cancer cells to turn turn it on, and after six months later, after maybe a couple of weeks later, a month later, if you turn it down, not eating, it drops down to a five percent or something. So the the cancer cells goes up and down as a result of a couple of weeks or a couple of months period of time, what you eat. So the, I mean, there are there are so many things, so many reasons to to not to eat. So to conclude that, I, I will recommend one documentary call uh, forks over knife and uh, Apollo is going to type it in there and so that documentary is I think it's a great documentary uh, a lot of research and so I, I would recommend everybody to watch watch that documentary not rent not rent the documentary I would recommend to buy the, that documentary have it on your uh, your iPhone or on your computer or wherever you have then watch not only one time watch a couple of times you know that, that it's it's a quite amazing uh, documentary so so again so th this is of course we are talking about the food the, the, the thing is we are talking here about the end of the year and we are talking about uh, changing something and we are talking about changing through the blessing and the teaching of the Dzogchen so how you do that the, exactly the point is uh, I mean, of course, uh, I talk about Dzogchen teaching somewhere of also um, the ways of uh, clearing things, way of healing, uh, the way of uh, cutting through. You know, I, 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 I try to emphasize that a little bit more because I think it's important to do that because it inspires more people. Because some people, there are, more, there are people there, oh, let's say this way, I can't step back one. The Dzogchen teaching, the self-awareness, is clearly uh, self-realization and self-awareness is clearly a great mean to cut addictions. Period. Okay, so that's that is the core message what I'm saying. So, 
as because of that, there are things that we struggle in our life, sometimes trying to change things in our life. And probably, and those of you are thinking, oh, I want it to become, might be hard. I want it to become vegetarian, but it might be hard. Okay? The same thing. I mean, I could, you know, I used to eat meat three times a day. You know? So, when you want to cut, you can cut. There's nothing you cannot do if you wanted to do it. The ability to do it also, that if you more you feel the connection to yourself, the more you be in that inner being, the more you feel that stillness and silence and spaciousness when those uh, ego, smart ego voices are active, smart ego's bodies is more active, smart ego mind is more active, take the pills again and again and again, let them sleep them down and be in the natural state of mind with that intent of becoming vegetarian or intent to overcoming certain, certain addiction, you will, you will do it. So, so that is, I, I'm trying to connect the doctrine teaching to, to the means of overcoming and then in the outcome, very practical suggestion is just to, to become vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, that makes sense? Okay, so what do you think? <laughs> yeah. So do you recommend vegan too? No, I think let's stay with the vegetarian. <laughs> let's stay with the vegetarian now. And uh, how, you know, how's our uh, internet audience are doing? Great. So I'm, I'll be very happy there will be 600 or 1,000 vegetarian today, you know. <laughs> so we have people here from Quebec, uh, Tepozeplan, Germany, France, Poland, Amsterdam, Belgium, uh, Berlin, Prague, Colorado, Mexico, Australia, uh, Austria, uh, it goes on. Yeah, so uh, I wanted to, you know, welcome all.